Hey, Dan, are you there? I was just wondering if you were still going to come home early like you said you were. I mean, have you even left the office yet? I'm just curious about when you're going to be home. Oh, shoot, yeah. I actually ended up having to do a bit of overtime, so I'm still at the office right now. Well, I wish that you would have told me about that sooner. I mean, I already made dinner thinking that we were all going to be eating together. Well, I'm sorry, but I just didn't have any time to say anything. I've been busy all day. Okay, then. What do you want me to do with the food that I made tonight, then? Are you going to eat it when you get back home from the office, at least? No, I don't think so. I'm just going to buy something on the way home, or maybe just eat here at my desk. Okay, then. That's fine, I guess. I'll just put it away, and you can take it for your breakfast tomorrow, then. Hold on a second. You mean that you're going to try to feed me leftovers for breakfast? You know that I always have the same breakfast every day! Okay, well, that's fine too, I guess. How about I eat it? Does that work for you? I just suggested it because I tried to make one of your favorites for dinner tonight. I made some beef stew. Oh, please. Don't pretend like you actually know what I like and what I don't like. I hate beef stew! And since when did you decide this? I remember when we got married, you told me you loved it. Okay, but I wasn't actually saying that I like it or anything. I was only saying that out of all the things you made for me, it was the best. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I didn't realize that that's what you were saying. So then, does that mean that you don't like anything else that I cook for you? That isn't what I said at all! All I'm saying is that what you're cooking is one of the worst ones I've had compared to others. Well, this is all news to me. You've never said anything like this to me before. Well, it's true. So there! What is even the point of this conversation? I just... I didn't realize that you've been eating my food this whole time, thinking that it wasn't even tasty. You were really starting to annoy me with the way you're twisting my words, you know that? I ate the food, didn't I? I don't know what you want me to say. I think that was already pretty nice of me. Well, sure, I guess, in a way. It's just that you've never ever talked about my food this way before. At first, I didn't actually even notice it at all that much, to be honest with you. But then I started noticing that as the guys in my office were getting married, their wives were packing them great lunches. And then I guess that's when I really started to notice that I wasn't the biggest fan of your cooking after all. But I don't really think it's a me problem. I think that you're actually just not that good of a cook is all. Well, you know that I try really hard in the kitchen every single day for you, right? It's fine. It's not a big deal, really. Some people have things they're good at and things that they're not so good at. I think that, to be honest, you're just not all that good at doing things around the house, you know? But at least you can work, so that's good. So then does that mean that you'll start to do the cooking from now on, then? Wait, what? What do you mean? Why in the world would any of that mean that I'm the one who would do the cooking? Well, because like you said, we are both working, right? And yet I'm the one who's always doing everything at home. So maybe we could split the chores, too. I could handle all the cleaning, and you could do the cooking. Look, I'm still at work, and you know how often they assign me overtime, right? You're the one that gets home consistently, so I think you should do the cooking. I see. So then basically you're saying that I'm just going to continue having to do everything around the house? It's just that before we got married, we agreed that we were going to split the housework, right? I mean, you remember the conversation we had where you said you would be fine doing that, right? But nowadays, it just feels like I do all the work around the house. Okay, well, you're making it sound like I'm the one piling it on you on purpose. Why do you always have to try to make me out to be the bad guy? Do you think that I want you to be feeling this way or something? The fact of the matter is that you just have more time on your hands than I do. So if you got home before me, I don't see the problem of asking you to do this stuff. What's wrong with the setup that we have now? The problem with the setup is that I end up doing everything around the house and you do nothing. Even just last week when you were free, you just went out and spent time on your own. I just have a lot of things going on. Why can't you be more understanding of that? And you don't think that I have anything going on then? I really don't think that I can do this right now. Can't we just have this conversation another time? I am literally stuck at work and I'm too busy to be doing this right now. I just told you that I'm working overtime, and you're still bothering me with this. Okay, fine. We can talk about this later, but I am trying to tell you that I get busy too. And I just wish that you would help just a little more around the house is all. You get that, right? 
I just said that we're going to talk about this later. Why do you insist on dragging this out longer? You really have just become such a nag recently, you know that? I mean, it's like you're trying to make me mad. And anyways, you talking to me like this doesn't make me want to help out around the house at all. Hey, Dan, when did you leave the house? Where are you going? You didn't mention having any plans. I had to leave the house because your cooking is just horrible! I'm going out to eat! Dan, please don't be like this. You know that I work really hard with my cooking. So you want me to just sit in silence and eat that horrible slop? You're practically serving steaming trash and somehow expecting me not to vomit! Did you really just call my cooking trash? What has gotten into you? Well, it's true, isn't it? Your cooking is absolute trash and it belongs in a dumpster, not on a kitchen table. I can't just sit here and pretend like I can eat that stuff anymore. I refuse to sit and force myself to swallow that slop that you served me. Please, Dan, even if you don't like my cooking, there's no need for you to talk about it like that. I mean, I took the lunch that I made for you to work the other day and everyone said that it looked really good. Don't you go bringing in the people from the office into this. Besides, you should know better than actually listen to them when they say that. They're obviously just being nice. Are you really sure they were just trying to be nice? Because it sounded like they meant it. And just how could you take my lunch like that anyways? Just because I said I didn't want it doesn't mean that you can have it. Man, you really know how to piss me off. But you keep telling me all about how horrible my cooking is. I was just trying to make something new for you, but you didn't even try a bite. Well, the way you're cooking is now, the only place it should be going down is a toilet. <laughs> okay, then. If that's really how you feel about it, then I guess I'll just stop cooking. And just why in the world would you try to do something like that? Do you expect me to starve or something? Well, you appear to barely be able to stomach my cooking anyway, so I don't get what the difference would even be for you. How about you try and put just a little more effort into your cooking from now on, huh? How does that sound? I mean, I know that you buy all kinds of pre-made crap that you try and feed me. What if you tried making something from scratch for once? You know there are all kinds of recipes online, right? So why don't you go find one and try that? I will have you know that I use plenty of recipes when I cook for you. <laughs> Is that supposed to be some kind of joke or something? How could that be when your cooking tastes so awful? I mean, really, you actually expect me to believe that any kind of effort goes into your cooking when it tastes that horrible? I don't know what you want me to even say to that. I know there are recipes online, and I follow them very closely. Well, it sure doesn't taste like that to me. But anyways, the point is that I just can't stomach what you've made for me today. So either throw it out or eat it yourself. I really don't care as long as I have no part in it. Dan, I don't understand why you're acting this way. Did I do something to upset you? It's like you've become so mean all of a sudden. You never used to talk to me like this, and now I feel like that's the only way you talk to me. Well, I have had my fill of your cooking, and I'm not going to be quiet about it any longer. If you're looking for someone to blame, how about you start with yourself? You mean that you really think this is all my fault? Uh, I don't even know what to say to that. How could it be anyone else's fault but yours? You're the one making all this horrible cooking that's driving me crazy! Might be better if you could at least keep the rest of the house in smooth running order, but instead you try to put all the work on my shoulders. So you're saying that the reason you're acting like this and talking to me this way is because you don't like my cooking? Even though you realize that I am doing all of the work in the house plus my job on top of that all by myself? And just what difference is any of that supposed to make, huh? You think you're some hero just because you vacuum and do laundry? Are you kidding me? What is the matter with you? It's not about being a hero or great or anything like that at all. All I am asking for is a little help around the house. Is that really so much? And all I'm telling you back is that I don't have time to deal with that. Is that so hard to understand? Honestly, this whole conversation is just pissing me off. I don't know what happened to you, Dan, but you have really changed. You're not the man I fell in love with. I'm the same way that I've always been, thank you very much. You're the one freaking out over nothing and making this into some huge deal, but it's not. Hold on a second. 
I think I might know what's up with you. You're about to start your period right now, aren't you? No, Dan, I am not about to start my period. Thank you very much. Oh, I see. Then why in the world am I having to deal with all this from you? If you don't even have your period as an excuse, then you really need to start taking responsibility for your actions. I can't even with you anymore. Uh, this whole conversation is just going nowhere, and, and it's giving me a headache. Oh, man, this is so you! I really should have known that you would try to pull something like this. You can't think of anything else to say to me, so you try to spit it so that I'm the bad guy. But I think that your efforts would be much better spent finding a cooking class and taking some lessons. And you could spend less time complaining to me about my cooking and just go and find somewhere to eat at instead. I mean, really, if you think my cooking is so horrible, then I won't ask you to eat any more of it. You do realize that you're my wife, right? You're supposed to be dedicating your life and working hard all for my sake. I'm the husband. And I shouldn't be having a fight like this with you. You really are a pain in the butt, you know that? And what about the work and dedication that you're supposed to be showing to me, huh? Why is it that I'm the only one doing the actual work when it comes to taking care of the house? Even when you do have free time, you just go out by yourself and leave me at home to take care of everything. Then you have the gall to complain about my cooking when I don't think you've ever set foot in the kitchen. I just got to a restaurant, so I'm going to stop talking to you now. I just know that keeping up this conversation is going to ruin this dinner for me as well. Okay, fine then. I won't text you anymore. Enjoy your meal. Hey, Emily, where the heck are you right now? Why are you in the house right now, huh? I'm going to be home late tonight, so that's why I'm not at home. Well, why didn't you tell me anything beforehand, huh? I should have been notified about this! You told me that you were going to be making me something really good for dinner. I got off work early just to get home so that I could see what you're going to make for me. Oh, I did make you some food. In fact, it should be covered and sitting in the microwave for you to keep warm. Hold on a second. What the heck is this? Is this supposed to be some kind of joke or something? What kind of dinner is this? I wouldn't feed this to a dog. What is the matter with you? Are you really telling me that I left work early and came all the way home just to be treated to this? When are you finally going to learn how to be a good wife and cook right? Well, I'm not sure what to tell you about that one, Dan. After all, I wasn't the one who cooked that meal. Is your mom not still over at our house right now? Wait, my mom? What does she have to do with any of this at all? Well, I just said that she's the one who cooked the food, didn't I? I told your mom about all your complaining and how it was affecting me. So she offered to try and leave some of her cooking at home for you. After all, you're always comparing my cooking to hers. But for some reason this time, there was something off about the cooking and you said you wouldn't feed it to a dog. Wait, I mean, well, I haven't even tried it yet. I was only talking about how the food was looking to me, you see? Don't go to leap to any conclusions! So then you're saying that your mom's cooking looks like sloth that you wouldn't even want to feed to an animal? Your mom sent me a picture of the plate that she made for you, and I thought that it looked really good, to be honest. But you must really have some tricky palate if even your own mom's cooking is putting you off. I think you might need to get that checked out. But I mean, I really had no idea that she cooked like this. Is this a prank? Did she actually make this for me? She's not even here. Well, I did give her the spare key to the house, so I guess it's possible that she just stepped out to go grab something. Hold on a second. This is really, really good, actually. I just tried a bite of the food that my mom made, and this is incredible! The look might have thrown me off, but I should have known that my mom's cookie would blow yours out of the water. No contest! Oh, really? So you're saying that it's just the look of the food that you had a problem with then? But... Otherwise, the food is actually really good. Actually, you know what? On second look, I can really start to see the plating that she did, and I think it looks great too. I mean, this is it. This is really what I've been waiting for this whole time. This is the kind of cooking that you need to learn how to do, Emily. You're just a happy fool over that plate then, aren't you? You're acting like it's one of the best things you've ever eaten. I mean, it sure is after all the slob you've been trying to feed me. 
This must be how it feels to drink water after crawling in the desert for days! I'm so glad to hear that you think that. Because the truth is that I cooked that meal that you're enjoying so much. Wait, what? What do you mean by that? I don't quite understand what you mean. I mean that your mom was the one who served it on the plate and made it look the way that it does. But anyways, thanks for leaving all this text evidence that you do like my cooking. I guess I'll head straight home now. As for your mom, I would recommend checking the guest bathroom. That's where she told me she was going to hide until I got back. And then, when I do get back home, I think that we are going to have a little family meeting. Emily, I really am so, so sorry for everything. I realized that I was acting terribly towards you and it'll never happen again. Oh, I know that you did something wrong. I've known that this whole time, in fact. But I actually never even stopped to think that you might have been cheating on me as well. Here I thought that you were working hard and late at the office every night and that wasn't it at all. But that doesn't mean we have to get a divorce, right? We can still work this out, can't we? Please, I'm begging you! Why? Why would I want to stay with you? Not even you wanted to stay with me! I mean, you were being so mean to me and saying all those horrible things about my efforts around the house. Did you not think that that was going to drive me to want to get a divorce from you? But... I mean... I broke up with the other woman! We're not together at all anymore! Oh, really? Well, that's too bad. Now you're going to have nobody to run to after the divorce. No, don't you get it? I'm trying to tell you that I chose you over her! You're the one I want to be with, Emily! I never once told you to break up with her, and I don't really care who you want to be with. The fact is that I don't want to be with you, and that's the only decision that really matters as far as I'm concerned. Please, don't do this to me. Can we just calm down and talk this out? I just don't want to lose you, Emily! I never meant for any of this to happen. Which part, Dan? Which part didn't you want to happen? It sounds to me like the only thing that went wrong for you was that you got caught. No, it's not that. I shouldn't have cheated on you. I shouldn't have hurt you like that. But please, please don't divorce me. Oh, just give it a rest already. This is really just starting to get pathetic. Everything you've done has always only ever been for yourself. I asked you for help around the house, and you guilted me into doing everything by myself. And this whole time, I was just working to give you time to cheat on me. I know, and that was horrible of me, and I should have never done that. I really am sorry, and I promise to be more considerate of your feelings for the future. Considerate of my feelings? Are you kidding me? Why do you think I care at all about what feelings you might have for me? Besides, it was your other woman who somehow got my number and told me about the whole affair. It's really a shame that you had to leave her, though. It sounds like she was already pushing for you to do so. She told me that she told you that if you didn't leave me, that she would tell me. But let me tell you now that you should have just saved us all the trouble and ran away with her. Why did you think that I'd ever want to be with you after this? It's more complicated than that, though! She's a woman from my work, and I was just so scared that I might lose my job if anyone found out. I really just didn't know what to do at all. So you were more worried about your job than your family? I really don't even know why I'm bothering to talk to you right now. The next time you hear from me, it's going to be through my lawyer, and it will be about the divorce. After that, the divorce proceedings for Dan and I began. I also made sure to sue him and his co-worker for their affair. They were both made to pay me a nice chunk of change. During all of this, word got out to Dan's company, and the two of them were fired for carrying on their affair in the office. Broke and jobless, Dan had no choice but to beg his parents to let him live with them. While they were furious, they agreed only because of the financial debt that Dan also owed them. My only request to them was that they keep Dan as far away from me as possible. Then I blocked Dan on every medium imaginable, took the money from the divorce and the lawsuits, and moved to a new town. I ended up using the rest of the money to open up a small restaurant, and I already have several regulars who all love coming to eat my cooking. 
I still cook for myself all the time, and Dan's mom even reaches out every now and then to ask for recipes. As long as that keeps me on her good side, I am happy to oblige her. Thank you for watching! If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this. Hey Jody, you know that it's Mason's 30th today, right? Oh hey sweetie, Mason? Is he the one with the golden filling? Yeah, that's him. Anyway, like I said, it's his birthday today, so... I said that I would host a party so everyone can celebrate with him. Um, what? Yeah, he was feeling kind of down because he's divorced and had no one to spend the day with, so I said we'd host a party for him to cheer him up. I see. How many people will be at this party? Just a couple of guys from the department and maybe a few from other departments. Not that many, though. Don't worry. It's just, we're not really ready to host a party. I mean, we don't have any food or drinks or, well, anything, really. Yeah, I know. That's why I need you to go to the store and pick a bunch of things up for tonight and get the house ready for everyone coming. What? So, that's like balloons and party hats and stuff. Also, you'll need to prepare quite a bit of food so that there's enough choice for everyone. And don't forget the cake. It needs to be homemade, though, because Mason won't eat a store-bought cake. He says that they taste horrible. Um, Ollie, I don't think I can do all of that. It's just way too much for me to handle at the moment. You know, I'm recovering from my accident, and the doctor told me not to do much, otherwise I could end up making my injuries even worse. Jeez, you're gonna give me that load of rubbish again? It's not like I'm even asking you to do much. Just go to the store and pick up some party stuff. It's not that hard. It's not gonna suddenly make you re-break your back and leg again. Besides, you've been lazing around at home for months now. I bet you're secretly all better and... You're just using your injuries as an excuse to get out of doing anything or helping around the house. It's getting kind of annoying, to be honest. Well, I'm sorry that my injuries, which I got because you assure me that you had checked the car brakes when you actually hadn't and they failed whilst I was driving, are inconveniencing you so much. I already apologize for that. You seriously need to move on. That's kind of difficult when your entire life has been turned upside down due to an almost paralyzing injury. Look, all you need to do is get in the car and go to the store. If it's really that bad, then just use one of those electric scooters out of the store so you don't have to walk. I mean, if you're okay with being that lazy. Ollie, I can't drive. I'm on strong pain relief tablets and the instructions say not to drive whilst under their influence. I don't care how you get the stuff, just get it. For once, can you not be such a downer and actually have a little fun? Surely you're allowed to do that, right? Okay. If you really feel like you need to throw this party, then I'll get the stuff. Thank you. Everyone will be there at about 7, so make sure everything's ready by then. Oh, and don't forget the alcohol. That's the most important thing after all. We don't want too much, right? It's not like people are going to be getting really drunk at this party. I mean, it's only for your co-workers and you still have work tomorrow, so you don't want things to get too out of control. Jody, when I say the alcohol is the most important thing, I mean it. Get quite a bit. I plan on getting quite drunk. What? But why? Um, because I want to? Jeez, what are you, my mom? Maybe you should drink some so that you can loosen up a bit. You've become really dull since the accident. You know I can't drink whilst on these painkillers. It's not allowed. What's the point in taking those drugs if you're not going to have a bit of fun with them? A party's a great place to relax and have a bit of fun. What? What are you on about? These tablets are for my pain relief. They're not for recreational use. And besides, I don't like that sort of thing anyway. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Boring. I've gotta go, but just do what I've said and get everything ready for the party. I'll see you later. Sure. Oh, Jodes. Jody. Jody. What? Are you asleep? I was. What do you want? Me and the guys are out of beer. I need you to go out to the store and pick some up. 
You know the kind that I like, and the other guys will just drink whatever you get them. Hurry up, though, because we don't want to sober up. That would be boring. Are you serious right now? Huh? You've actually woken me up just to ask me to get you some beer? I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm telling you to go and get the beer. You're my wife, so you have to do as I say. You know how long it takes me to actually get to sleep because of how much pain my back causes me. And what are those people still doing here anyway? It's almost midnight. Send them home right now. What? Why would I do that? We're having an amazing time. There's no way that I'm going to kick these guys out of my house just because you told me to. Just because you're a buzzkill doesn't mean I have to be one. Now go and get me and my friends some beer. Oh, and some snacks. We're all a bit hungry, so get the ingredients to make nachos, and when you get back, you'll have to cook them. I'm not going to do that, Ollie. I don't know why you think that I would, but I find it very difficult to move around like normal at the moment. I was almost paralyzed, so it's going to take me quite a while to build up the strength in my back again, and for it to return to as close as normal as it can get. I really don't have the strength, nor the patience, frankly, to deal with you and your drunkenness. If you want more beer, You'll have to go and get it yourself. You know, you seem to remind me of your injuries every single day. It's really annoying and really pathetic. You're not even that injured. You're just faking it to be lazy. Well, I see right through you and your little schemes, so either go and get the beer like I said, or you can sleep outside for tonight. Are you actually serious right now? Yup. Fine. I'll take the car. My tablet should have worn off enough for it to be safe for me to drive. Car's got no petrol. You'll have to walk. What? Why hasn't it got petrol? Cause I haven't filled it up. Duh. You know what? It's too late to argue. I'm just going to call a cab. We're not made of money, you know. Ty can't afford for you to call a cab and have it waiting whilst you shop. Just walk it. The online store is only like 20 minutes away. You should be able to walk that easily. Let me get this straight. You want me, a visibly injured woman with a cast on her leg, to walk 20 minutes in the dark by myself just to go and pick you up some beer, which I will have to carry back home with me. Stop trying to make it sound like it's a difficult thing. It isn't. I've done that walk more times than I can count. You'll be fine. You'll have to hurry though because me and the guys are really hungry and thirsty. I'm not walking to the shop. If you want me to go, it'll be in a taxi or I won't do it. I'm not going to purposely put myself in danger just to please you. I'm not that stupid. Fine. Get your stupid taxi, but don't think I won't remember this. Whatever. Oi, right, Jody. Are you almost finished shopping yet? Me and the boys have been waiting forever for the food and the beer. You're really taking your sweet time. Hello? Jody? Oh, please, are you actually gonna ignore me just to try and make me think that something bad has happened to you? Grow up, as if I'd fall for that. It's very sad that you'd even attempt to do something like that. Haven't you got any decency? I mean, to pretend that you've been hurt just to try and make me feel guilty? Ha. Huh. Hello, Ollie? Oh, so now you answer me? What took you so long? Wait, no, let me guess. Your injured back prevented you from messaging me back any quicker. I mean, it seems to stop you from doing literally anything else, so why would this be an exception? Oh, wow. She was right. You really are acting like a completely horrible person. Huh? Jody? Is that you? No, I'm afraid it's not Jody talking at the moment. But you're about to wish that it was. What? Who are you? It's me, Popcorn. Mom? That's right. And boy, you are in for an earful now. Mom, what are you doing out so late? It's dangerous. You should get home as quickly as you can. Oh, so it's not okay for me to be out so late because it's dangerous, but it is okay for you to send your injured wife out into the dark to simply pick you up some beer, huh? Well, that's different. How is that any different? In fact, it's worse for her because at least I can run away. Jody would be at her attacker's mercy. 
Are you honestly that stupid, boy? No, Mom, it's just... I'm not done yet, so don't interrupt me. I am so ashamed to call you my son at the minute. Why do you think that you can treat your wife in such a terrible manner? Did I teach you to do that? No, Mom. You bet I didn't. I taught you to respect women and treat them right. Is sending your wife into the night what you consider the right treatment? No. So why do it? It's just me and the guys weren't quite done with having fun yet. And that's another thing. What are a bunch of grown men, practically strangers, still doing at your house at one in the morning, blind drunk? That's Jody's home too, and she deserves to be able to rest and recover in it, and not have to clean up after a bunch of drunken, messy people. I am so disappointed in you right now. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to kick whoever is still at the house out. You're then going to clean up all of the mess you and your friends have made until there's not a speck left. Then, you're going to wait for Jody to come home, which won't be until tomorrow now, as I've said that she can stay at my house. And you are going to apologize to her. It's up to her if she takes you back or not. What? Clean. Now. Yes, Mom. I'll be coming around tomorrow to make sure everything's been done properly. Okay. Um, what are you doing at the store so late anyway? Your dad is sick. He has a cold. So I was getting him some medicine as we had run out. And don't think that he won't be hearing about your behavior either. Ah, uh, yes, Mom. Jody and I are going now. We'll talk tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Hey, um, Jody, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I just wanted to apologize for my behavior yesterday. It was out of line, and I'm sorry for treating you that way. I see. Are you just saying this because your mom is telling you to? Um, she said I needed to apologize, so I am. I'm sorry. I know I was a bit of a jerk yesterday. Try for the last few months. What? Ever since my accident, you've been a total jerk to me. Last night was just the final straw. What do you mean? I can't take you back, Ollie. I'm not going to be with someone who degrades me and makes me feel awful just for being injured. I'd rather be on my own than have to deal with a jerk like you. Hey, hang on, wait a minute! Sorry, Ollie, but I can't wait for your mom to step in and correct you every time you do something wrong. You've had your chances, and I'm done. Goodbye. After that, I decided to leave Ollie as I felt he simply wasn't treating me right. I wanted to be with someone who would try to understand what I was going through and help me with it, not someone who tried to make me feel as if I was in the wrong. Ollie's parents completely understood, and I still talk to them every now and then to see how they are doing. They tell me that Ollie hasn't really changed much since I left. He still drinks and parties, only he's the one who's got to clean up the mess afterwards. I think it's safe to say that I got out of our relationship at the right time. <laughs>